And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. On September 23rd, 2017, the heavenly sign foretold of in Revelation chapter 12 of the New Testament of the Bible will be present in the sky as the stars align for what appears to be the first time in human history. There will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. For thousands upon thousands of years, ancient cultures have been foretelling of a future time in history, and you're in that time now. Not only are you going to see an incredible astronomical alignment in this video, but you will also see the birth of a king known as Jupiter to the Romans and Zeus to the Greeks. Starting around November 20th, 2016, Jupiter enters the womb of Virgo and due to retrograde motion stays in the belly for about nine and a half months or 41 weeks before exiting the womb in September 2017. Miraculously, this just happens to be the human gestation period for a baby inside its mother. At this point, I would like to clarify something. This is not a video about the end of the world. There seemed to be a lot of confusion in part one of this series where I talked about the biblical blood moon tetrad. Many people were thinking automatically I was talking about the end of the world or the apocalypse. To me, the apocalypse means a revealing. The word apocalypse is the lifting of the veil. It's not the end of the world. And many people seem to be confused about that. In my opinion, their fear stems from so-called end times, thanks to horror stories from Hollywood and religion, as we find ourselves in the end of the age of Pisces, an age of believing, deception, suppression, and control. I don't think I need to ask you if you have noticed how hard at work the dark occultists have been lately in fear of losing control. As more and more people awaken and tune into the higher frequency, realizing who they are, the dark forces ruling the planet must keep you in fear while enslaved in their current construct. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. The Aquarian age we are approaching is the age of knowing, truth, harmony, expansion, and incredible potential for the human race. Please do not confuse some new age movement with just being something new. Due to the precession of the equinoxes and the wobble of the earth, we move backwards through the zodiac about one degree every 72 years, or 30 degrees every 2160 years. In order to have a better understanding of the ages, we must briefly jump back about 6,000 years to around 4,000 BC. This was the beginning of the age of Taurus and lasted roughly 2,000 years. Egypt worshipped the bull gods of Hathor, Apis, Bacchus, and Menevis. Mesopotamia had Enkidu, the bull of heaven. China had a bull god of agriculture. In Sumeria, they had the bull god Enlil, and sacred bulls and cows could be found around the globe. In the following age of Ares the ram, the bull was slain by Mithras, the Persian and Indian god, announcing the end of Taurus, and Moses destroyed the golden calf being worshipped by many people. In this age, you saw the Jews blowing this shofar, or the ram's horn. Egypt depicted Amun-Ra as a ram. The Greeks had a horned god, Pan, who turns out to be the only Greek god to die at the end of the age. In the age of Pisces, 
from around 1 AD to the present time, we have the Lamb of God being slain and the Son of God being portrayed as the great fisherman. The symbol for Jesus is the fish. Jesus feeds 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves of bread. The Pope's mitre is shaped like a fish head. Jesus met two fishermen and told them he could make them fishers of men. Even the word none in the Aramaic means fish. Contrary to what you might have been taught growing up, the word occult does not mean evil. It means hidden, and occult knowledge can be used for good or bad. Part of our awakening involves understanding that man is the measure of the universe, the microcosm of the macrocosm, as above, so below. In the Middle Ages, you find many depictions of the zodiac man. We are almost at the point of the video where I show you the coming great sign in the sky. But I think now would be a great time to discuss one more little known fact, or at least fact in my humble opinion. Leonardo da Vinci studied the occult and said that the human organism was an analogy for the universe. There exists in the writings of virtually all civilized nations a description of the major stars in the heavens, something we might call the constellations of the zodiac or the signs of the zodiac of which there were 12. If you go back in the time of Rome or beyond to Greece, or before that to Egypt, Persia, Assyria, or Babylonia, regardless of how far back you go, there's a remarkable phenomenon. Nearly all nations had the same 12 signs. I would now like to show you what many believe is the true hidden message in the Last Supper. If you look from left to right, you will see groupings of three disciples. The first three representing spring, the next three representing summer, with Jesus depicting the sun, the following three disciples representing fall, and the final three representing winter. At the head of the table is the man with his hands on the table in the position of a ram, like he is about to ram something. Well, he happens to be Aries, the ram. And next to him is Taurus the bull, who has his arm wrapped around the neck of Gemini. The twins, showing you with his hands, the twin hands. Taurus is also pointing at Cancer's neck, where Cancer is in the human. You see, you can lay the Zodiac Man down on the table with his head in Aries and his feet in Pisces, where you see Pisces holding his two hands out as if he was holding two fish. Now going back to Cancer, you see Gemini with the two hands up. Cancer, the crab, is holding a knife like the claw of a crab, and he's pointing at what would be Virgo's neck, maybe saying, hey, look here. No Adam's apple. Next to Cancer is Leo with the arm on the table. The king of the Zodiac, the Lion King, Leo the Lion. Next you have Virgo. And then in the middle you have Jesus as the sun. Now you'll see that Jesus is here between Virgo and Libra. Jesus here between Virgo and Libra in the end of September is providing the harvest of the wheat and the grapes or the wine on the table before he's crucified in Libra. You see the next sign next to Jesus being Libra, the scales of balance with the arms out as the scales, before he's crucified and goes down to the dead of winter to his death, where the sun is actually reborn on December 25th, but we won't get into that in this video. Next to Libra is Scorpio. You can see the finger being pointed upward, the stinger of the scorpion. The kiss of death, Judas having kissed Jesus, actually giving him the kiss of death. Scorpion bite looking like two lips. I never understood how Judas betrayed Jesus by kissing him. However, I believe that that is actually a kiss of death from the stinger. Now you see Libra as if it was Jesus being crucified is between Scorpio and Sagittarius, which are known as the heavenly thieves. Jesus was crucified between two thieves. Between October 23rd and December 21st, there's a harvest almost everywhere of the year, somewhere except for these two months. And these are known as the heavenly thieves. Making up the winter signs, you have Capricorn, and next to him is Aquarius, with his hands positioned as if he was emptying a pitcher of water. And at the end of the table, you have the man with his two upward hands, which would be holding the two fish. Now, I understand that a lot of people are just gonna think this is all totally, just totally bonk, totally ridiculous. However, I also believe that there's gonna be some who are in a certain frequency that will be able to look at this and probably do their own research and be able to 
see something here that they had never seen before, something that very intriguing, making them think of what's really happening here. Coincidentally, when asked by his disciples where to prepare for the Passover, Jesus said the following, and he said unto them, Behold, when you are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. A so here we are, everyone, an incredible sign in the heavens. I'm going to link you below to someone who's done research claiming that this is the only time this happens in 7,000 years. But there may be other times the alignment is similar, but I don't think there's another time where the alignment is similar and Jupiter had just gone through a 41-week gestation period in the womb of Virgo. So this is totally incredible. This is a sign of the end of an age as we transcend into the age of Aquarius and we have an awakening happening in the human race. And this is just an incredible sign. You know, God said, let the stars and the planets be for signs. So on September 23rd, 2017, Virgo will be in the daytime sky. You have to remove the daylight here in the Stellarium program to see the alignment. But the, she'll be draped in the sun. She'll have the moon at her feet. Jupiter will be coming out of the belly of Virgo, out of the womb, and she'll be crowned with 12 stars, Leo being made up of nine stars, and in line with Regulus will be Venus, Mars, and Mercury, making up 12 stars. I'm going to leave you here with something else, uh, talking about what is arguably one of the oldest books in the Bible, where God talks to Job about the Maseroth which is the Zodiac. I'm going to leave you with that and uh, one other verse from the Bible. Thank you. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Please check out my Blood Moon video, which coincides with this, part one of the series, and also part two. I'll link up part one and two below. Uh, the Shemitah, which we came through. It didn't quite happen the way that it seemed like it was going to happen, but we did have a collapse of sorts and commodities and I think these are all signs leading up to where we're headed so thank you very much for watching everyone and I'll be speaking with you all soon canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion canst thou bring forth Mazaroth in his season or canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? And it shall come to pass, in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved.